is up everybody welcome back to another episode of driving with randy i am your host road rage randy for those of you that have never joined us for the podcast we are a a very unique podcast we we do it in my car which happens to be a 2007 toyota sienna it's most reliable car car around 198k miles on and we decide we're going to start a freaking podcast and essentially what we do is we just talk we ramble about things and we we get angry with people because let's be real you think people know how to drive people have no fucking clue how to drive and now there's a cop car behind me that just uh that just makes this place all the better or this podcast all the better because i don't i I think we're kind of in a gray area as far as if podcasting is legal or not. So one day we're going to get pulled over. And I do know I have every right to record the police, whether it, it be how I'm dry. Like I have, I have my headphones around my neck and I'm talking. I just, it's hands free in my opinion. So I just, I, I honestly have no freaking clue if it if it's legal if it's illegal okay so let me tell you guys this i feel like 65 and 66 were a complete disaster it it was pretty much like i I took like seven different takes and i mixed them all up right so i thought hey i'm recording 65 right now but i was actually recording 66 i was recording two at the same time and it pretty much i can't keep the tracks organized I have no idea. So I'm like, fuck it, boys. Let's put it into one. Let's put these two clips into this podcast and these three clips into this podcast. And if it doesn't make sense, well, it doesn't make sense. That's the end of it. Um, yeah, I just, I, I don't know. So I need to start providing you guys with quality content. So this is episode 67. I'm not going to get it confused because it is going to be all one clip. Actually, possibly two clips, but... I only have two clips on my on my phone right now, so it's going to be this clip and another clip. It's all there's no possible way that I can mess this up. Well, I mean that's what that's what you think, but it's definitely possible. So I've got I've got a lot to talk about. A, a lot. It's a first. I, I never have a lot to talk about recently. That's why I feel like 64, 65, and 66 were shit shows. Like. They were shit shows, and it shit show because it's a show. So it's a, it, you, you understand. It was just I, I feel like they were bad. My mic recorded terribly, but I've kind of got some topics. Kind of, not too much. I, I feel like there's definitely more I could talk about. But to start things off, we are going to go ahead and say today has not been a good day. All right. For those of you that have followed the podcast, you guys know that my neck has been, like, killing me over the past, you know, five months. So, it's it's just, it's terrible. Over the past five months, my neck has just been bad. And I set I had a doctor's appointment up for December 4th. And I woke up this morning and I'm just like, I'm not having it. It hurts. I need this figured out. Uh, it, it, it really hurts. So... I went ahead, I went online, see if they had anything earlier, see if an appointment opened up. Sure enough, one opened up today. So I'm like, all right, I'll take it. 11.20 a.m., I'll be there. Let's get this figured out. I'm tired of being in pain. I'm tired of not feeling well. Let's get it done. And truthfully, I think it went horribly, terribly. Because am I going to get the help I want? No. Did, do I... I think what's going to happen, what's going to happen is I'm going to take his recommendation. It's not going to do shit for me. And then I'm going to be stuck with something that continues to hurt. I'm going to be right back at the, I'm going to be right back to square one. And let me tell you, it's probably not going to be with him. All right. I, I do feel like he gave me a little better of an explanation today than he has in the past. But I do also feel like he's just not fucking listening to me. I've been in pain for five months and he's not doing shit about it. 
he's like, maybe we should take an x-ray and see if anything's there. Your chiropractor's taking x-rays, right? Like, yeah, my chiropractor is taking x-rays. And I know how you feel about my chiropractor. You absolutely hate it. You think I'm going to have a stroke? Because there's like a 1% chance you have a stroke when you're getting a chiropractic adjustment. He thinks that's going to happen to me. I'm like, listen, pal, there's lots of people. They are trained professionals. I get it. You don't like it. K. K, dude. But my dad has got better from it. My aunt's gotten better. And there's a lot of people there that have gotten better. So I'm like, why can't I just try the chiropractics and see how it goes from there? And obviously it's not working. My neck still hurts. And um, he, he, he's like, well, we can take an x-ray. And the, where I'm kind of at is, I don't want an x-ray. Fuck the x-ray. Because it's just going to be a waste. And I'm stuck paying for 20% of an x-ray, which is like $70. It's unreal. You think I'm going to pay... I had to get one on my knee, so I, I know what the cost of an x-ray is. I'm like, I, I don't want an x-ray. Fuck that. I ain't taking another x-ray. I'm like, can we skip it and just get an MRI done? Because I pay exactly $0 for an MRI. And he's like... I'd have a hard time, a hard time, um, because he has to justify the need for it, and he's like, I'm not seeing any reason as to why we would do that, I'm not seeing any evidence as to suggest a pinched nerve, I'm not suggesting any evidence of a tumor, or anything like that, and I'm like, bro, my neck freaking hurts, let's get this taken care of, please. And it's just, it, it, it pretty much ending in December 6th, I'm going to a physical therapist. I feel like they're going to just say, pal, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, this is what I need you to do. And if it hurts, which it, it's going to, he's like, well, I'm just going to. back. So it's back to square one because the physical therapist ain't going to do anything. And it's frustrating. I, 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 I. Be the, I'm going to be the first to admit I shed some tears today. That's right. Even Road Rage Randy gets emotional sometimes. I was crying. I hated it. It just It's frustrating when you haven't had the quality of life that you want over the past five months. And there's not a whole lot you can do about it because doctors aren't cooperating with you. So I... I, I'm, I feel like I'm going to end up at a different doctor. I feel like I'm going to be explaining the same stuff. I'm going to be going through the same process. And I guess I can only hope that this doctor listens and uh, carries on. Because I'm tired of it. I just want to live. I just want to be happy. I, I, I got to watch when I say that. Because I am happy. I really am, but this is stressful and a detriment to my life. It's, it's very, it, it sucks, it sucks. Undiagnosed neck problems, it sucks. And the doctors aren't doing anything. So, you know, you feel, you kind of get to the point where you feel very alone, like he just thinks you're making it up and it's, it's frustrating. It is. But on a different note, um, on an upcoming podcast, let's, let's, let's get back right on the podcast topic because that's a good one. That's a good topic to talk about. So we're going to, oh, baby. So I want to kind of film a Christmas special. I kind of want to film, a, why am I saying film? Am I a YouTube vlogger? No, I'm a podcaster. I, I make pod blogs or pod we should come up with some kind of a name for that because I feel like this ain't your typical podcast this is this is this is on a new level this is a new level new type of podcast so we're gonna have to definitely definitely feel like um god dang it I lost my oh we're gonna have to come up with some kind of a name and the podcast is going to blow up when actually let's talk dude so this um one of the activities we had yesterday at work was 
write down something that's stressing you out, put it in this box, and we're going to shred it. It's just a good way of getting something off your mind. You're not keeping it inside. And the next, uh, and then take another piece of paper, and it's like, write something down that makes you happy. So I wrote A, I'm going to beat Pete in fantasy this week again. That's uh, I know that's a big topic. I, I won last time. I won three to two. If you, I, I don't. What are you doing? Hit the gas. Um, I wrote down my podcast because my podcast really does make me happy. At the end of the day, I don't care how many people are listening to it as long as it makes me happy and makes the listeners happy. Then I'm happy. So I'm happy. And then the third thing I wrote down was my girlfriend's name. And I actually have that piece of paper in my pocket right now. Uh, we were told to put the things that make you happy in your pocket as a reminder. So I've got Emma's name right in my pocket here. All right. We are on our way to the gas station right now. We're going to get some food. We're going to get a drink just because that's what I want. And I feel like that's what's going to make me happy today. <laughs> um, it's been a rough day. Uh, secondly, or thirdly, I have... I had somebody contact me today and they want to be on the podcast. So we're going to record a podcast. Um, is it going to be good? Hell yeah. So the, the whole idea is he has a school project that he has to do and he has to use some kind of current technology to portray the information that he's writing down. So that's, what I, that's what's going to happen. It's going to be a little different. Because I'm not going to be interviewing. It's going to be conversation, but he's going to be interviewing me as opposed to me interviewing him. And it's just, it's going to be a very good podcast, in my opinion. I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. I think he's going to have a lot of fun with it. And overall, it just provides a little some different, or it provides a different kind of a content for you guys that I know I can't produce to you by myself because I can only talk to myself. I can't, can't just talk to other people unless the people cooperate. So we are definitely, this guy, this lady, this, this thing in front of me is driving like she's never drove before. Let's go, let's go, let's go. My, uh, unreal. Anywho, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a very, very good po- Oh, I guess they're coming to, the, coming to the gas station to get some donuts with me. Anyways, um, I am going to be right back. I'm not going to take you guys with me because the audio inside has just been really crappy lately. And um, we're going to get this taken care of and then I will be back to further discuss things. So right now we are in the we're in the 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 city, St. Paul. I hate it. I hate the city. Minneapolis, St. Paul, just downtown. It's just it's too crowded. There's too much in too little of space. It's like it's overwhelming. And I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But that's not why we're here. Today we're gonna talk about about um, a book I finished reading because I never got around to reading that. I've, I, or I, I've never gotten around to podcasting about it. Uh, and I'm already, you know, a third done with the other book that I'm working on. So it's like, it's, it's like I, I need to get this one out of the way while it's still a little bit fresh in my mind. Um, so the book we're going to be talking about today is... Unfollow by Megan Phelps Roper. Quality, quality book. I really liked it. I really did. Like my my book collection is pretty much a Joe Rogan book collection. Every every book I own has um, has some kind of a linkage to Joe Rogan. I guess that, that's just how I find interesting people is on the Joe Rogan podcast because I you know you guys know me. I don't follow you know the news or. The, I don't follow celebrities, Hollywood. All that's just a waste to me. I, just, I don't understand the whole Hollywood scene and celebrities and 
following people who are in movies. Like, if they did a good job in the movie, cool. I don't care what they did in their life. I just, I don't. But that's just me personally. Um, but yeah, I find people on the Joe Rogan experience. And Megan Phelps Roper was on there. I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I want to say episode 947. You go ahead and check me on that. It's probably not right, but that's how we that's how we freestyle. You just type in Joe Rogan, Megan Phelps Roper should come up. Um, so essentially, who is she? Well, we're gonna be talking about the book, but you know, the the, the book is a memoir of her life. So I'll just explain to you guys who she is. So Megan Phelps Roper is one of the former members of the Westboro Baptist Church. The Westboro Baptist Church is a church down in Kansas? Is it Kansas? I think it's Kansas. I want to say they're from Kansas. But it's a church that her grandfather started and they pretty much, they preach the Bible, but it's very, it's like they take things differently than a lot of other religions. So like, love thy neighbor. So they sit there and they go picket protests, or they, they go picket um, dead soldiers' funerals, and people get mad at them, and they say, we're loving the neighbor. They're spreading the word of the Lord, saying, hey, if you don't want this to happen to you, like if you don't want to get shot, dead soldier, then you should obey the Lord and repent. It's just kind of how they worked. And um, I thought that the the book was very good. I think the, the hardest part about the book, in my opinion, was she did quote the King James version of the Bible. Um, so there are some Bible verses in there, and it's the King James Version. And I don't know how to say or read things that have like thy, thou, thee, and just, it's weird. I don't know how to read it. I don't understand. I barely understand regular English, let alone a, an ancient translation of the King's Jane Bible. Um, but she does a fairly good job of explaining what these words quotes mean or it's pretty much she gives an idea and then the reason why she thought the idea is quoted with a bible verse because that's what they believe they believe the bible is the living breathing word of the lord and um essentially it takes her through the whole process of her growing up and what ultimately you know takes her takes you through like finding or you get to learn about her family a little bit. Um, you get to learn about daily life, what it was like to be in the Westboro Baptist Church. And essentially what it boils down to is it, it comes up with, not to be a, a spoiler or a spoiler alert or anything, but she does leave the church. Like if she didn't leave the church, why would it be a book? But her and her sister left the church and it pretty much takes you through the process of how she came to these conclusions, how she started to kind of second guess what was happening. It, like she just she 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 thought there was a bunch of contradictions and the church wasn't giving her the answer that she wanted um, for her to justify the actions. She she felt like all they did was make people angry and they, they weren't loving thy neighbor I, I believe there, there was a there was a couple reasons why she left um, you're just gonna have to read to figure it out in my opinion it's a very good book um, I thought the ending uh, I thought the beginning was very good so in, in the beginning God it sounds like I'm starting the Bible because that's how it starts I, I believe the Bible starts with in the beginning um, no but in the beginning, she actually dedicated the book to her mother. And that's another big part about the church is if you leave, you're excommunicated. Which is actually kind of sad because um, the grandfather, the one who started the church, actually became excommunicated. I think he started having second thoughts. Fred Phelps. And... 
he became he, they were he was no longer in contact with his family on his deathbed he was alone the family did not care um megan and the sister actually got word that um their grandfather was dying and actually um showed up on his bedside and um they had a they had a good talk with their grandfather um which is noted in the book and ultimately the book ends Megan is like she it, it it ends with her essentially saying mom I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at anybody in the church. Her brothers, sisters that are still with the church, aunt, uncle, I'm not mad at you. I wish you guys would um, like look into things a little more. And because there's a there's a whole world out there that they're missing. And I, I thought something that was very cool was that when they decided to leave the church. Um, she was shocked that the the world gave her a, a whole bunch of praise. Like, I think that's great. Um, people in a tough situation, they weren't, people weren't, the public wasn't blaming her. Like, hey, you just spent all these years picketing dead soldier, soldiers' funerals, saying God hates fags, calling people sodomites and just, you know hating on people pretty much but that's how she was raised and that's what she believed so when she finally was able to get her thoughts in order which she got in order from a twitter a twitter follower the 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 church is very active on twitter and she um ended up speaking with her now husband and they just ended up convincing well he, he wasn't really a convincer. He just pressed hard questions and made her think. And I think that's the best way to get someone. You don't try and change them. You got to press hard questions and go after their ideology and theology. And um, Megan ended up making a choice that I'm sure was extremely hard to make. I mean... Just think about it. You're with your family for 20... I think she left when she was 20... I want to say 29. But I feel like that's old. Like, somewhere in the range of 23 and 29. But you grow up with your family, living with them every single day. You kind of get in a routine. And for her to break free from that, that's insane. And then she goes on to tell her story. Um, I think she's great on the Joe Rogan. I've listened to her on TED Talks. Um, I even follow her on Twitter. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a big deal if I follow you on Twitter. So speaking of Twitter, make sure you go follow me at thoughts by Randy. Um, it, oh my God, well, we just missed the light. That is the longest freaking light. We're going to be stuck here for quite some time. Um, but yeah, go ahead. Follow me on Twitter at thoughts by Randy. You can go on Reddit r slash driving with randy this was a 11 minute podcast about um about a book what i'll probably do is i'll probably end up putting it with another podcast that i already have recorded so um take it easy